Spurge here, and in this video, we are going to break down the Alpine Stars Super Tech R10 helmet. So this is not the limited edition Alpine Stars helmet that they came out with a few months ago. Uh, this is the actual production version of the new SuperTech R10. You're gonna see the two current colors on the table, the black version, which actually shows the carbon fiber shell through the black, and then you have the white version on the table as well. We have been riding in these helmets for about uh, four months at this point. Pat McHugh actually did a couple of uh, TikTok and Instagram videos asking you, the viewer, for your questions, your feedback. We are gonna try and hit as much of that as we can in this video. So sit back, get your popcorn ready, because we're gonna break down the newest street helmet from Alpine Stars. And this really is the first street helmet from Alpine Stars a few years ago. Alpine Stars made their way into the world of helmet protection with the SuperTech M10, which was their top of the line dirt helmet. That's a helmet that I used for years. I crashed in it, I retired it. An absolute, just an amazing helmet straight out of the gate from Alpine Stars in the dirt world. And really what we're seeing with the SuperTech R10 is they're now following that same trend in the world of race helmets. Now, one of the main questions we got out of the gate for this is can you use this on the road? This is first and foremost a helmet designed to be used on the track. This is a racetrack helmet. You've got two spoilers that it comes with. However, we were actually really impressed with its street manners. And we're gonna talk about through all that as we get in here. But this is a helmet that you are looking at if you are looking for an aggressive sport style helmet that is gonna give you track level protection, but it's also gonna be comfortable enough that you can wear all day on the street. Now this is going to be top of the food chain premium from Alpine Stars. The two solid colors that you're seeing right here, the black and the white, are going to come in around that thousand dollar price point. We're expecting that any graphics that you see will punch the price of this helmet north of around that $1,200 mark, depending on what the graphics come in at. But right now, these are the two solid colors that Alpine Stars is launching this helmet with. So let's start off with the shell, and then we're gonna work our way through there. And like I said, I'm gonna address questions as they pop up from you, from the people that have, have already written in questions about this particular helmet. But unlike some of the other people out there that have reviewed the limited edition one, this is going to be the production version that we have here. So the shell on this is a 3K carbon composite shell. That means that there's a lot more material than just the carbon fiber that you can see on the outside of the shell with this kind of a translucent black color. So you're gonna have 3K carbon. You're also then gonna have a layer of fiberglass and aramid composite. So really a sophisticated shell that will work its job to keep you safe, but also looks really sharp when you're looking at this in the black. The other thing to note too, when you're looking at the white, the white, you can't see the carbon through the actual white, but when you get around to the back, it's this really cool kind of a matte carbon that's done in the back. And I love the way that these two kind of colors play with each other. So you just get a hint of that carbon in the back of the white one. So. With the shell on this, you are gonna have four different shell sizes. That was another question that came through was how many different shell sizes will you see with the production version? You're gonna have extra small and small gets one shell size, medium gets its own shell size, large gets its own shell size, and then extra large and two extra large get a shell size. You're gonna have a DOT ECE 2206 safety rating. So this is going to be the top of the line ECE rated helmet. It's not gonna carry a Snell rating. So for those of you asking whether or not this helmet is gonna be Snell, it is not. They're going to the ECE 2206 standard. Remember, that ECE standard really does play a lot more in the world of rotational protection than what we've seen from Snell previously. Um, seven intake vents, three exhaust vents. We're gonna get into it as we rip this apart, but just one of the best ventilated helmets that we have seen for the street or the racetrack. Uh, we were joking that there's a little rubber tab that you can pull out for maximized venting. You don't wanna lose that because if you ever wanna ride in the cooler months of the year, there's so much air that pushes through on the front of this helmet that you wanna make sure you can block that off if you are gonna use this in the cooler months. So maximize venting. So we'll hit that question right out of the gate. Just a tremendously ventilated helmet. If you get the helmet in your hand and you actually look through from the inside, you can see out the top of the helmet when the vent is open. So just maximize venting there. Three pounds, eight ounces in a medium. Now, that might sound like it's not the lightest helmet you've ever heard of, 
But this helmet, because of the way the aerodynamics were designed, wears its weight so very well. So, so three pounds, eight ounces is a nice middle weight helmet to begin with. But the way this helmet wears that weight when you're on a motorcycle, just tremendously lightweight in its nature. From a fit standpoint, intermediate oval, a little bit longer front to back, a little bit narrower on the side of the head, but it really just contours to your face. Uh, I was talking with Pat earlier and he goes, it's almost like a tactile fit. Very kind of, uh, you know, you put it on, you feel like you're you're wearing something that that is gonna protect you, but overly comfortable enough that you can use this all day long and not feel like the helmet is beating you up when you're out there on the road. Now, if you're not sure about what we're talking about with internal fitment, we do have a how to size and buy motorcycle helmets guide to walk you through all the different internal head shapes that helmets can provide. There is some adjustability with this one that you wouldn't see with other helmets, but just keep in mind that this is going to be designed for those of you out there with an intermediate oval shaped head. If you are overly long oval or you're just a really round head, this might not be the helmet for you no matter how great the feature set really is from Alpine Stars. So just make sure you're getting the fitment right out of the gate. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, there is that other video for you to watch. Colors right now, we're looking at the black and the white. The biggest note here with the black is that you can see the carbon fiber through that translucent gloss black. With the white one, that carbon fiber is only gonna be around the back like I showed you earlier. So just keep that in mind. If you're really going for that carbon fiber look, the translucent black is the color that you wanna go with. So what's included in the box? So very, very quickly out of the gate, you are gonna get a dark smoke shield. You're gonna get a clear shield. You are going to get pin lock ready shields. They will have pin lock inserts included in the box as well as tear off strips. So the cool thing, is in addition to the big kind of fun Alpine Stars bag you get, you get a shield holder, which helps to just kind of keep that other shield from getting scratched up while it's in your helmet bag. And you can see that's the, the clear one right here. And it's got just a little extra layer of protection on there. You wanna make sure you take that off before you start riding in it. And then you can kind of pick and choose where you wanna put that pin lock insert. You're also getting race tear off strips and you're getting two different spoilers. So on the black one right now, we've got the long spoiler. There's also a short spoiler, which actually I can show you. We have the short spoiler on the white one. The average rider is not going to be able to tell the difference of whether or not you're using the short or the long spoiler when you're on the motorcycle. The only difference would be is if you're riding with a backpack, that long spoiler might get in the way of the backpack. But unless you're really in a intermediate to upper track level group, you're probably not gonna notice the difference of the spoiler. However, when you're looking at how this all combines with the turbulators that are on the face shield, as well as the turbulators that you're gonna see here with the little wings on the side, this is what helps smooth out this helmet throughout the air. So it's a combination of not just the spoiler on the back, but you're gonna have the wings on the side, you're gonna have the turbulators on the face shield, which help to disturb the air, which help to move the air past you on the helmet. So that is gonna to contribute to the overall, you know, we talk about how this helmet feels when you're on the bike, we talk about how it wears its, wears its weight well. That is what helps with all of that. The other thing it helps with is actually reducing wind noise. For a road helmet, this is one of the quieter helmets that we have used on the street, let alone on the track. And oftentimes when we're talking about a track helmet, one of the biggest sacrifices you make is the fact that it's not overly quiet. It's designed to be a performance helmet. They're not worried about whether or not it's quiet on the street. Alpine Stars did just a fantastic job of meshing street comfort with track performance with what you're getting here. And I think it really shows with the overall design. So even though this looks really aggressive, it is something you can wear all day long. And it is one of the quieter helmets out there, which is a question that we constantly get, uh, not just in the, the questions that we threw out on social media, but also just in the questions we typically see in the comment section below. What I will say, however, is quiet, is subjective. So what's quiet to us might not be quiet for you. Um, just keep that in mind. I would always recommend using earplugs with a helmet, especially if you're taking long trips. Let's get into the ventilation and then talk about the face shield a little bit. So with the ventilation on this, you're gonna see you've got two vents on the side here and there's two different positions for those vents. And then you're gonna also have this little rubberized tab that pulls out. Now. Here's where my first nitpick comes into play. You're gonna lose this. 
don't. Okay, we talked about that a second ago. If you pull this out and you lose it, as soon as it gets a little bit cool, you're not gonna have this to put back in and that just flows a tremendous amount of air. So I would recommend for Alpine Stars, maybe make sure that we're selling this piece extra because I can foresee a lot of people potentially losing this. You wanna make sure that you have this someplace in a pocket, maybe in a tank bag or a track bag. You don't wanna lose that when you pull it out. So just make sure you know where you put that little tab. So again, it's, it's not super sophisticated in the fact that if you pull that out, you have to keep it somewhere on your persons on a ride. But again, it does work to flow a tremendous amount of air. The other thing you'll note is this little piece right here is a face shield center lock and it actually locks. So once that's in there, you cannot open that face shield. So the only way to do it is you kind of push in and that opens and releases the face shield. Love the detents on this. Again, you can ride with this up to highway speeds, leave it in just a cracked position, and the detents does a great job of holding it in place. Love the gasket design. The gasket design works perfectly to seal the helmet off. My only nitpick with the face shield, so this is where my second nitpick comes into play, is, and I'm just gonna put it in here to kind of help me demonstrate this, and normally I, I, I would kind of shy away from this, but I wanna kind of showcase to remove the face shield, to swap back and forth, there's a little silver tab here, you pull that forward. That pops that off, looks easy enough. If you look in there, there's a little orange kind of tab. You need to make sure that tab is in the up position. You need to make sure that when you push this in, you are pushing the face shield into the tab and then rotating down, that locks it back into place. If you don't do that correctly, what I have found in my playing around with this, is that you can actually kind of put it in, push the tab down, but if it's not in place, then the tab gets stuck down in the bottom and the face shield will not lock back on. And if that's the case, you have to get, we were using a little pen and then you have to pull the orange tab back up. So that is my second nitpick for the helmet is that it could have just been a bit more sophisticated. You are getting the turbulators like we talked about. Looking at that top vent, this is where you're getting a tremendous amount of that airflow through the top. Down is in the closed position, up is open. And like I said, if we're looking at this through the front of the helmet, you can actually see through the top of the helmet, it just flows a tremendous amount of air. Three exhaust vents out back. You can kind of see them, if I hold the helmet up, they're kind of buried up underneath the spoiler in the back, they are passive vents. So there's no real way to close those. Those are just there. If you have airflow pushing through, it comes out the back. If you don't have airflow pushing through, you don't really worry about those. The other thing to note here before we get to the inside of the helmet is if you do want to use this with a column system, there's two ways that we found to mount it. You can do a sticky mount on the, the back side, like Pat mounted his. I also mounted one up underneath the, the front part of this. The one note here is that this whole cutout for the shell is to help with collarbone injury. This is all part of the cheek pad system. So you can see there's almost like this reinforced back cheek pad that comes down and it's firm. What you need to do is pull the cheek pad away and then you can mount the comm system up underneath here. So that's where you kind of have to work into being able to do that. So we did find two different ways that you can mount the cheek pad. I'm not gonna go ahead and put that cheek pad back in uh, right this second because I'm gonna move on to rip this cheek pad out. Double D-ring closure, love to see it. Um, really what we're gonna talk about here is you do have the emergency release system cheek pads. I love, you get a little pop reflective here, but very comfortable with the liner. Um, and it does work to cradle your head very nicely. Now, you're not gonna see MIPS in this, but what you are gonna see is what Alpine Stars calls their A-head system. Before we get into the slip liner, let's talk about the cheek pads, because what you're gonna notice here is that you have these little extra pieces that fit over your ears. This is something that mounts behind the snap-ins for the cheek pads, and then it sits over top of your speaker pockets. Now, positives on this is it really helps to cut down wind noise, very comfortable to wear, doesn't feel like it's extra bulky. The only downside to it is that it does muffle the sound of your speakers a little bit. Now, I think you can kind of fine tune this and play around with it. Maybe try using earplugs with speakers and without these. Maybe try using these without speakers. Maybe try punching holes in these little things. Um, but again, you can kind of fine tune this. But for those of you looking for a helmet that is more quiet than it is anything else, this is a nice little simple addition that adds comfort uh, and adds noise reduction, 
but really doesn't add too much complexity to the overall design. Three snaps for the cheek pads. It is an emergency release cheek pad system. And then as we're looking at the inside there, you can see the speaker cutout, very deep speaker cutout with this. So you can mount all the new modern speakers that are a little bit thicker. You should have no issues with that. Four piece liner system. And I wanna be just careful with how I'm pulling these snaps out. Uh, again, three snaps and it should be no real issues getting these in and out for those of you that want to clean your cheek pads more regularly. And same thing on this side, you just have that extra little piece of material that works in behind two of the snaps on the cheek pads themselves. The top system, and this is just kind of your crown, no direct snaps in the front, so overall comfortable. Two snaps in the back behind the real thick layer of padding, and then an extra little layer that goes up into the helmet liner itself. So that's three of the four pieces. And then what I wanna to do to show this is open up the face shield and pull these out of the way. So this is a system that we saw from Alpine Stars before. You've got six different positions for this top liner. And what you can see is that the material here slips and slides on this top slider piece, and the slider piece itself can be actually moved and repositioned. So, let's see if I can just pull this off to show you. So if you're looking at the tabs in there, there's three tabs on each side. So you can kind of rotate forward or rotate back to see exactly where you want this to fit on your head. You can kind of move the helmet forward so it, it fits a little bit lower in the front, or you can push it back so it sits a little bit higher on your head. Other than that, very simple system, not too much in the way of a deep channel cutout with the liner, which is actually surprising because it flows so much air, I would have figured there'd be more channels in there. But it does just a good job of, you can see there's just a little bit of, a, of, a, of an embossment into the liner and that does wonders with just pushing that airflow through. And then the top liner, like I said, this doesn't use MIPS for rotational protection. It uses what Alpine Stars calls their A-head system. Maybe that's a translation thing. Um, but it's basically this piece of plastic on the back. You can see there's arrows showing you that it needs to go into the right direction. And then this just slips on the top. And that's what gives you your rotational protection. And like I said, you can move this back and forth depending on where you want it to sit. So all things considered, just a fantastic helmet from Alpine Stars with their first out of the gate shot at a street helmet. They really aimed for uh, the moon on this one and they really delivered. Like I said, my minor nitpicks are just with making sure you don't lose that front ventilation tab on this. And then also just maybe some of the complexity of having to line up everything just right for the face shield system, especially if you're swapping back between face shields, between dark smoke and clear. But all things considered for bringing a track helmet to the market that also works fantastically as an everyday street helmet. I love the look of carbon with this. I think a lot of people do. You also have the juxtapose of the solid white with just the carbon flare in the back. It's, it's gonna be an excellent offering for Alpine Stars. I think it's gonna go up really well against the existing competition of folks out there. And I think we did a good job of uh, answering a lot of the questions that we did see through in the, in the comments section. So if you've got more questions, and let's start with if you wanna hear what other riders have to say, you can click the info button on your desktop or mobile device. You can read other rider reviews from folks that are out there putting this helmet through its paces. If you are still not sure if this is the right helmet for you, whether the right helmet for you for your next track day, your next street helmet, you can always reach out to one of our customer service reps and they can walk you through all the different helmets available to make sure you find the right helmet for your price point as well as your riding style. I want to thank you though for joining us for this first look at the Alpine Stars Super Tech R10. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.